is the product from k equals 1 to infinity of 1 minus 1 over 2022 to the k factorial a rational number? This question was asked on a Harvard maths competition paper back in 2022, and today I'm going to be answering it. And I really like this solution because it doesn't follow the standard format of these sorts of problems where you're trying to discover whether a number is rational or not. So do give this problem a go, but I'm going to dive right into a solution here. So we're going to start by doing this by contradiction. So it actually turns out that this number is irrational. And the way we're going to argue that is by contradiction. So let's call this number something, p, let's say. And we're going to suppose that p is rational. And we're going to show that this leads to a contradiction. So first things first, let's just write out what exactly p is. It's this big product here. So 1 minus 1 over 2022 to the 1 factorial times 1 minus 1 over 2022 to the 2 factorial times 1 minus 1 over 2022 to the 3 factorial and so on forever. Okay, cool. And in theory, you could expand out this bracket. Um, so if I, you know, chose to, I could just choose all the ones from each bracket. And if I multiply that all out, that's just going to give me one, of course. Um, OK, I could also decide, you know, I'm going to take this guy here, this minus one over 2022 factorial term, uh, maybe the one from this bracket and maybe this term from here and then ones from all the others as well. What would I get if I multiply that out? Well, the ones are obviously going to multiply to one. What about these two terms? Well, I've got two negatives, so that makes a positive term. And it's going to be 2022 to the power of 1 factorial plus 3 factorial. 1 factorial is 1, 3 factorial is 6, add them up is 7. Cool. Um, how else could I create a term? Well, I could choose this term here, this term here, this term here, and then 1s from all the other brackets as well. What would I get there? Well, I've got a triple negative there, so that's going to give me a minus 1, all divided by 2022 to the 1 factorial plus 2 factorial plus 3 factorial, which is 9. So I'm going to get terms like that. And obviously, there's a bunch more, infinitely many more, in fact. OK, so each of these terms here, hopefully it's pretty clear to see, are of the form 1 over 2022 to the n, and then either plus or minus 1 on the top. Now, I argue that we're never going to get repeats. So for example, here we've got a 1 over 2022 to the 7. I argue that when we expand all of this and consider all the products, we're never going to get a 2022 to the 7 term again. Why is that? Well, it comes from the fact that every single number um, can be expressed in at most one way as a sum of positive factorials. So, for example, the number 8 is 3 factorial plus 2 factorial. That's one way to write 8 as the sum of positive numbers factorial. And it turns out that there's no other way to do it. And this is the same for every single number. Now, I'm not going to prove this fact in this video. But if you did want to, I'll leave it as a bit of homework for yourself. And I'll give you maybe the first step of this proof. You want to use the fact that 1 factorial plus 2 factorial plus 3 factorial and so on up to some number m factorial. That's going to be less than m plus 1 factorial. So you want to use that fact there to prove that if you can write a number as the sum of factorials like this, uh, distinct factorials, I should, I should have mentioned that, then there's only one way to do it. There's no other ways to do it. Um, so do give that proof a go, but we'll, we'll just take that for granted for the time being, just so that this video doesn't get too long. And so we're going to assume then that every single term in this expansion is of this form. So in other words, we can write p in the form the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of, let's say, epsilon n over 2022 to the n, where each epsilon n is either minus 1, 0, or 1. So minus 1 and 1 coming from that case. And why do I include 0 here? Well, not every single value of n is possible. So for example, there won't be a 1 over 2022 to the 4 term, because it's impossible to write 4 as the sum of uh, factorials, or using positive numbers um, and distinct factorials, because uh, 3 is 2 factorial plus 1 factorial. So if you're trying to write 4 as the sum of factorials, you'd need to use 3 factorial. But 3 factorial is already 6, so that's too big. So p is this sum here, the sum from n is 0 to infinity of epsilon n over 2022 to the n, uh, where epsilon n is either minus 1, 0, or 1. 
This looks awfully similar to a geometric series. So if we had the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of just 1 over 2022 to the n, now you can just use the formula for this, which remember is a divided by 1 minus r, and this just turns out to be 2022 over 2021. Cool. Why is this at all relevant? What we're going to do is add both sides of these equations together. So we're going to get p plus 2022 over 2021 equals the sum from n equals 0 to infinity. I'm going to add this to this. And so I'm just going to call that delta n over 2022 to the n, where each delta n is just one more than these numbers here. So it need to be 0, 1, or 2, because we've, we've added this 1 here. Cool. Oh. So long story short, we've written p plus this rational number. So remember, we're assuming p is rational. So we've got a rational number equals the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of delta n divided by 2022 to the n. Let's see why this gives us a contradiction. Pause! I've decided to set up my own tutoring company to help you study maths at a top university. So if you like the way I explain things, go check it out. Let's get on with the video. So p plus 2022 over 2021 is this infinite sum here. And if we stare at this infinite sum, we realize that this is actually just writing this p plus 2022 over 2021 as, or writing it in base 2022. So if we were to explicitly write this out, this would be delta naught, decimal point, delta one, delta two, delta three, and so on. And this is just in base 2022. Okay, so this is interesting, but remember, at the start, we assumed that p is rational. So this number here on the left is certainly rational, because if you add two rationals, you get a rational. But here's a nice fact that we're going to use, that if you take any rational number in any base you want, then that number will eventually have a periodic sequence of decimal digits, or, you know, digits after the decimal point will eventually be repeating, eventually be recurring. So, for example, if you look at the number zero in just base 10 or whatever, 0 0.8373737, this will correspond to some rational number. But if the, you can see that the, the decimals there are repeating, 373737. And you can try this with any single, any number you want, any base you want. Um, that if it's rational, then its decimals will form a periodic sequence. So that tells us that for you know, let's say that the period, I probably should have not used the letter P there, let's say that the period of this sequence is R, and that means that if you go far enough down this line of deltas, it will start to repeat. So if uh, N is bigger than or equal to N, let's say, then delta N uh, equals delta N plus R for all such N. Um, so I should probably say for all n. So there's some number capital N, which we don't know. So that's when the sequence starts to become periodic. Um, then delta n equals delta n plus r. Um, so every term is equal to the same term that's r spaces ahead of it. So for example, if r was 4, then that means that delta 38 equals delta 42 equals delta 46, and so on, provided capital N is at most 38. Uh, but anyway, the sequence will then become periodic after that point. Now, here's where things get interesting. Since the delta n's are periodic, so since delta n's oops, are eventually periodic, uh, so I'll just say periodic here, then so are the epsilon n's that we had earlier, which remember were 0, 1, or minus 1. So minus 1, 0, or 1. So those will also be periodic with period R, and again, this capital N value will be the same. Now, here's why I remember that infinitely many of these epsilon Ns were non-zero. Um, and that was just true because any number, there are lots of numbers, or infinitely many numbers, which can be represented as the sum of factorials. That's pretty obvious, because you could just keep going to whatever number you wanted. Here, so if I went up to 100 factorial, that's a number, whatever that number is, it can clearly be expressed as the sum of factorials. And so then let's just say that this is k, we know that epsilon k would be 1. And so there's infinitely many n's for which um, epsilon n is non-zero. Cool. So epsilon n is non-zero for infinitely many n. What is that to do with this thing being periodic? 
Well, what we're going to do is choose a number, let's call it M, and M is going to be a very, very, very big number. It's going to be 1 factorial plus 2 factorial plus 3 factorial plus blah, 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 all the way up to T factorial, where T here is a very big number. It's going to be the maximum out of the number P. Uh, oh, sorry, not, not the number P, the maximum out of the number N and the two times the period R. So T is going to be a huge number and M is going to be this even bigger number, which is the sum of the factorials up to T factorial. Now, here's where things get interesting is now we can say that M plus one, M plus two, all the way up to M plus R. None of these numbers here can be written uh, as the sum of factorials uh, or distinct factorials because M kind of uses up all the factorials, if you like, up to t factorial. So the only way this would be possible is if uh, any of these were less than t plus 1 factorial. Um, but because of this condition here, this just means that t is sufficiently big that none of these numbers here can be written as the sum of distinct factorials. Why is this at all relevant? Well, this means that epsilon of m plus 1 all the way up to epsilon of m plus r, these will all have to be 0. But this is a contradiction, because remember, we said that infinitely many of these epsilon n's are non-zero, and epsilon n has a period of r. And so we've got r consecutive terms in the sequence of epsilons, but they are all zero. But this contradicts the fact that there are infinitely many non-zero terms and the period is r. So I hope this solution has made sense. I think this is a really, really interesting problem. I've not seen a solution style like this, where you show a number is irrational by thinking about the periodicity of its digits in a certain base. Anyway, if you have enjoyed this solution, please do give it a like and please do subscribe. If you're new to the channel, I make lots of videos. This one uh, I think is really, really interesting and something different, uh, different to any of the videos I've made before. Anyway, thanks so much for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. Have a great day.